and uh, interesting uh, undertaking that Sanjay is getting into. So uh, this afternoon, the topic is really Video Technology Innovation 2020, looking ahead at what's to come. And this is from Sanjay's experience, his research, and his network. So without further ado, please welcome Sanjay. Thank you, Jim. Really appreciate it, and thanks for this opportunity. It's been really great pleasure already. I've had some number of uh, interesting conversations uh, leading up to this, uh, just in this room. Uh, what a phenomenal gathering in terms of uh, expertise that you guys all bring, uh, folks uh, from all different parts of the industry. Um, and uh, as I said, I already had uh, some very, very interesting conversations, and I'm really encouraged by what uh, we collectively can do to move the industry forward. Um, so. I, I know it's a cocktail hours, and um, uh, uh, I know we all enjoy a good beer and all that, so I'm, I'm going to try to keep this as informal and as brief as possible, uh, but in the process also share some of the key uh, insights or thoughts that I have uh, based on my vantage point and some of the, the work that, that I've been doing, and I hope you find that useful um, uh, takeaways from here. Um, before I get started, um, I wanted to make an observation. Uh, and, and tell me if you guys agree with, uh, and there's all kinds of ways to describe the world, but one way to describe the world is, we live in a video world. Who would agree with that? You know, anybody agrees with that? Right? Uh, and I, I tell you, and I, 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 I was debating whether I should use this example or not, but finally I'm going to use it, so I hope you, are, uh, you guys don't mind. But yesterday I was with a, another good friend of mine, a very senior executive in one of the large media companies, uh, who shall remain name, name, nameless, and he is not here. <laughs> uh, but he and I were uh, coming out of a meeting, and we both needed to go to the bathroom, and we went to the bathroom. And he is a fanatic follower of uh, basketball games. And guess what he is doing in the yeah. <laughs> He has his phone, and he is watching the video of basketball game. <laughs> and I'm like, I'm bad sometimes you end up doing texting and things like that while you're right. But he is watching video in the bathroom. I'm like, wow, we definitely live in the video world, right? So, so if you have any doubts, I think that proves the point that we really live in a video world. Um, uh, other, other things are, uh, and we, we were having a good conversation with our good friends at Turner Labs here. Um, and uh, Turner and uh, Time Warner and AT&T merger, as, as you guys all know, uh, is going through the process. But this year, around this time, about 60% of traffic on wireless network is video. 60%. That's, that's just absurd. That's phenomenal, right? Um, we are talking about not wired connection. We are talking about wireless network, right? Cellular network. Cisco study, which they do every year, they do every year a very, very in-depth study they call CNI, research report, uh, and it's available free online. Um, they are predicting by 2021, 78% of wireless traffic is going to be video. That's more than two thirds, right? That's it. That again, you know, it's just phenomenal. You know, it sometimes takes seconds to wrap your arm, uh, head around that. 78% traffic on wireless infrastructure is going to be video. So all of us who are in video content ecosystem obviously have our work cut out for us, right? Uh, not only we have to make it more consumer friendly, but we have to make it cost effective. Um, and, and really keep pushing the advances around video and content um, um, ecosystem. So, in looking at this space for a number of years, uh, and more recently, I think there are five major trends, at least from my vantage point, that are important to uh, think about and, and be aware of it. And, and my hope is that none of them should be news to any of you, because who you are, right? Because what you do for, 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 for the ecosystem here. Um, but still, it would be good to sort of uh, go through them and at least share what I, what I think uh, uh, are those five trends. So the first one is, there is intense competition for the user's share of minutes. So we all have finite number of minutes available in our daily lives, right? So if you do the math, 14, 1440 minutes in 24 hours, right? And if you take out the minutes that we need for sleeping and eating and a bunch of other stuff that we have to do, there's only so much minutes available, so many minutes available for people, uh, uh, companies, to use those minutes for our attention, right? And there's intense competition for that. Whether you are on social networks, whether you are texting, whether you are watching video, right? Whether you are conducting e-commerce uh, on platforms like Amazon or eBay, 
uh, there's all sorts of uh, platforms that demand our attention, and we are using those platforms. So there's intense competition for user share of minute. But within that trend, one specific things, if you look at what Snapchat is doing, if you look at what Facebook is doing, Twitter is doing, obviously the, the, all the existing media companies are doing, if you look at what mobile carriers like AT&T and Verizon and, and Sprint and those are doing, that all of them are really increasingly focusing on video. So not only there is intense competition for our user share of minutes, but within that there is intense competition for, for, for all these platforms and all these companies for them to get us to watch some kind of a video. That's really one major trend that, that we are seeing, and that translates very clearly the 60% of wireless traffic being video, 78% going to be video, and so forth. Right? So that's trend number one. Intense competition for user share of minute. There's a trend number two in the, in the media industry uh, specifically, there is a proliferation of professionally generated video content. So I'm not even talking about user generated video content, I'm not talking about YouTube and Facebook stuff people share and all the, all the videos. I'm talking about professionally generated video content. Uh, I'll give you uh, a one data point that I just came across this morning, believe it or not, uh, and I was showing uh, to you, Jim, I think earlier. Um, between HBO, ABC, NBC, the 2007 budget for content is totaling to about $11 billion between those three companies, HBO, ABC, NBC. Between Netflix and Amazon, 2017 content budget between the two is also $11 billion. And if you think about it, Netflix and Amazon were not even a media company 10 years ago. Right? And Amazon actually even much later, right? Netflix was out there, but Amazon even much later. So the point is there is a proliferation of professionally generated content. And another data point, this is my own research that I've been looking at, between 2009 and 2016, the fresh TV content, the new TV content, we are not talking about reruns and things like that, we are talking about newly created TV shows, has doubled in terms of number of hours per year, right? So 2009 to 2016. Similarly, in the films world, between 2009 and 2016, Fresh film content, number of hours, total number of hours that are produced, original <coughs> content has actually more than little more than double in that time time period. So the, the bigger other big second big trend that I see is proliferation of user uh, professionally created created content, and and at that leads to you know in co combination with the intense competition leads to the third trend, which is there is a fragmentation in the ecosystem in terms of where this content shows up and how it shows up. And quite frankly, a lot of that is also driven by consumers, where consumers want their content to be, uh, where, where they want their content to be, right? You know, you want your content on any device, at any given time that you have, in any form factor that you might uh, have access to, any connectivity that you might have. You might have a wired cable, you know, traditional cable TV connect connection, or you might have a home Wi-Fi, or you might have a cellular connection, and so forth. You want content. We as consumers want our content on any device, anytime, anywhere, at our choosing. And that leads to this content ecosystem, all these different companies that are part of the ecosystem, for them to get their content out in many different formats, in many different ways, to all these different platforms. So that's the fragmentation that, that we, are, we are seeing. And with fragmentation, what happens, there is a challenging business model. How do you make money, right? One of the, one of the example uh, that I, I use is that uh, my, I, have, I have two kids, uh, my daughter is now 13 and my son is nine, and, and I, I wasn't paying attention up until more recently, but I don't think they have turned on any part of our home TV. We have three, four different TVs in different rooms. They have turned on TV on their own probably more than five hours in, in their entire existence. Right? And I'm serious. Uh, and, and, and I'm sure you all know this, right? If you have young kids about that age, you, you know that. Right? That's really, but, but guess what? They are more video content consumers than my wife and I are. Everything they do is video. Right? Even in school is video. Some of the lessons that they get are video. So my, my daughter uh, happens to be very interested in biology. I hope her interest stays there and we'll see how it, how it evolves uh, through high school and so forth. But she's interested in biology in fourth grade, and she's in eighth grade right now, she's gonna start high school in September. In fourth grade, that school that she goes to had a, uh, 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 this whole practi practical about uh, dissecting sheep's brain. 
And part of that, you know, that was like two week series that they were going through. And part of that, a lot of the instructions were done using pre-made video about dissecting sheep's brain and things like that. And I was just, you know, this is, remember, she was uh, in fourth grade, right now she's in eighth, so four years ago. I was just astounded. I mean, the teacher was smart that, hey, I'm a fourth grade teacher, I do not have the, the total knowledge about sheep's brain and, and how to dissect it and all that stuff, but guess what? There are tools, the video tools available out there. <laughs> Use the video tools and I'm gonna teach my kids in class this biology practically, not just by visual charts and so forth, but actual practice using these video video sessions that they're, they're able to obtain. So, as we as, as I'm saying, the fragmentation is a big big trend, and that uh, you know has a interesting impl implication. Some some of them are painful implications for the ecosystem. The fourth trend that I see, which again I'm sure all of you would agree here, uh, is that the file sizes for the video content are continuing to increase. And they will increase when AR content comes on, when VR content becomes much more mainstream, when 360, when 4K, when 8K, all of those things come together, guess what? The, the file sizes are going to grow. Obviously, that is not to say that video compression technologies will not improve. They will improve because a lot of startup companies and a lot of big companies are really spending a ton of money, energy, brain power in, in improving the video compression, so that will happen, but it is not going to be solving the entire video size file problem in entirety, right? So compression will improve, but still the, the growth of file size will be big enough for us to think about what are those implications for the industry uh, as a whole. One of the things that I, I you know, spending some time with our friends at Panassas, uh, I learned that in last five years, uh, Panassas team, uh, that active store product has enabled 250 terabytes of storage Petabytes. for all the different uh, petabytes. Petabytes. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, 250 petabytes of uh, uh, storage in the in the industry with all these different customers, right? And that represents about 400 percent increase uh, over that period of time, right? And and guess what? That trend is going to continue. That trend is going to continue at pretty much similar uh, pace, given what we expect the file sizes to be for all these different formats that are, that are coming on board. So, the trend number four, I believe, is the large file sizes, and obviously that has an implication on the ecosystem, not just storage, quite frankly, right? How do you process it software-wise, you know, to manipulate this file, you know, to chop it, you know, to, you know, pay snippets out of it, you know, to actually pull it from storage, you know, retrieve it, share it. I mean, there's all kinds of different, I, I, I ran into a startup company uh, from Europe uh, yesterday, and, and they are, I forget the name now, uh, but, uh, they, they, all they are focused on uh, software that effectively allows upload downloads of large uh, video files. That's all <coughs> they're doing, and they believe that is a big enough problem and uh, a good enough problem uh, that a lot of companies would be needing in this ecosystem that they would have a, a tremendous uh, uh, you know, success. And I, I, I think I would agree with that uh, in principle, right? Um, so that's the trend number four: large uh, file, file sizes are, are going to grow. And then the trend number five, which uh, often people don't think about, uh, but I think is a very important one, and I, I've seen this personally myself, is tremendous growth and affection, if you will, for video in the world of enterprises, corporations. So Red Bull, Red Bull has basically a professional video content studio to create their own video content for a variety of different purposes, for their marketing purpose, for their user training, and all sorts of other things that they, they use it. Marriott actually does even bigger job in terms of having their own professional. So they are almost, if you think about it, the, if, you, if, you, if you rank the, the 100 content creation companies, 100, and you take the last five, some of the enterprises who are not considered video content company, some of the enterprises are even bigger in terms of their work and their, their, their budget that they spend and the, work, the amount of content they produce, they are bigger than maybe last 20 of the, the content companies, right? So you follow what I'm saying? If you, if you take the companies that are, that are clearly tagged as content creation company and you rank them 100, 1 to 100, there are enterprises out there like Marriott and like Red Bull whose content budget and content effort and video and, and storage needs and all that surpasses the last 20 in that 100 rank, right? Think about that. That's that's the important trend to keep in mind for us as video ecosystem players, you know, to serve that effect effectively. Uh, even uh, companies like uh, IBM, if you look at IBM and what they do in terms of their video production, 
huge. It, it runs into hundreds of millions of dollars of fresh original content that they create. Uh, we as employees demand that, right? How many of you want to sit through employee training using this uh, survey, bland questions, and uh, you know some uh, uh, bland PowerPoint charts, and you have to click through it, read, read, read through paragraphs, and so forth? And how many of you would expect that, hey, there's some animation, some video that teaches me about security, or compliance, or ethics, or whatever the, the employee things that we all need to go through as, as, as employees, right? And a lot of that is turning into video driven education. Um, so that's the uh, fifth big trend that I see. Uh, so let me, let me and, and all of those trends have very significant implication across the entire video workflow from content creation to processing it, to storing it, to retrieving it, to distributing it, to monetizing it, to measuring it, right? Across all these uh, different piece parts of the video workflow, there are huge implications based on these trends that, 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 that we are seeing. And I want to uh, take a little uh, time just to kind of, since we are talking about um, uh, our big friends here from uh, Parnassus and, and T2, I, I want to kind of talk about what are the specific implications for the storage part of the workflow, right? But as you can imagine, the implications are across the entire, entire workflow. But before I get into that specific uh, implications, let me just quickly summarize the five trends so that we, we, have, we, have, we have that in our head. Right? The trend number one, intense competition for our user share of minute, right? Trend number two, proliferation of professionally generated video content. Trend number three, fragmentation, dri driven by the ecosystem, but also by users and how users ex ex expect it. Trend number four, continued growth in file sizes for video, video content, again, driven by AR, VR, 4K, 8K, and so forth, right? Uh, and just to give you, give you an idea, one hour of uh, uh, 1080p traditional, you know, current current uh, high quality video uh, is roughly around 250 gig in size. And if you want to create that one hour in 8K, it's going to be about 7 terabytes. So that's uh, even from 25 to 30 percent increase, right? And as I said, video compression will take care of some of it, but not all of it, right? So, so that's trend number four, large file size are, uh, are growing. And trend number five that uh, uh, we, we uh, talked talk about is that there is a enterprise video demand and growth and expectation, right? So those are the five major trends trend to the, the video workflow, uh, specifically to the storage uh, uh, area, right? Storage part of the video workflow. Uh, there is, and, and again, this should not be a surprise to anybody. If it is a surprise, then I think we are in trouble, right? <laughs> <laughs> but there is need for speed, right? Things have to be done so speedily nowadays, right? It's, it's applicable to every single media outlet out, out there, right? You have to have a need for speed. You have to be able to take the files, you have to be able to process it, do whatever intelligent things that you want to do with it. You have to be able to store it, you have to retrieve it quickly, you have to push it out to different platforms. So need for speed is one big implication. Again, that should not be a surprise to any, any one, of, one, of, one of us. Um, then, second implication is that the storage infrastructure, storage architecture, and storage processes need to be able to deal with very efficiently the mixed file workload, right? Mixed file workload is because you know you have one hour program, one hour file size, one hour content, but then you have to be able to quickly deal with the two minutes, three minutes version clips that are getting out, and if you extrapolate across all the different programs that are on that network and other networks, the mixed file workload is, is the need of the day, right? That is part of the equation now, and you have to be able to deal with that very efficiently, very, very effectively. So that's the second impl implication. Uh, and we talked about the growth in the video, right? So the storage architecture, the storage infrastructure has to be able to scale linearly in a most efficient way, right? It cannot be that, okay, I give you 200 terabytes worth of storage or whatever, 100 terabytes or whatever the size of storage, and this is the architecture for that. And if you think you're going to go grow 50% from where you are today in the next 18 months, then we have to rethink the architecture, then we have to redo the whole thing. That cannot work. That, must, you know, that just cannot work. You have to have efficient architecture and processes that allows the customers to be able to scale linearly in a most efficient way. Right? So that's the implication number, number three. And that's why the software plays a really, really important role. And, 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 and I, I do not claim to know all the nitty gritty details and smarts that uh, Panasas and team have put in uh, in their active store and direct flow. I, I absolutely do not know all the details, but from what I know is that they have taken that intelligent software approach with the active store architecture and the direct flow protocol and so forth. So I think that's the kind of models that are necessary in the industry 
to keep up with those five major trends that we, we, we talked about, right? The fourth implication, which again, obvious, but still important to state, is that it has to be very cost effective, right? You cannot say that, you know, the, the one hour of current high def file is 250 gig, and now it's going to be seven terabytes, and that means I need 30% more budget to deal with that, right? Even though the file size is 30% increased. I don't think that's how it's going to work out from a CFO's point of view, right? CFOs are not going to, even though it seems very logical argument, right? Hey, you know, the file size is growing 30%, so my storage budget has to grow 30%. Unfortunately, that's not how CFOs can look. CFOs can help come up with a better way of dealing dealing with this thing. So the cost effectiveness is obviously very, very important implication. And then the fifth one, which is, again, uh, should not be uh, in obvious, it's, it's obvious, ease of use, right? The people who are dealing with this uh, infrastructure day in and out, and some of you, I'm sure, uh, are doing it and have teams that are, that are dealing with, you have to make it easy for them to do, right? You, you know, easy to use the storage architecture and, and being able to uh, manipulate the files in a most effective way, intelligent way, quick way, in order to satisfy the need for speed, right? In order to satisfy the cost efficiency. Uh, and use of use, use has to be uh, a one key uh, element. And again, I, I don't claim to know all the details, but from what I've seen, uh, uh, Active Store and Direct Flow and, and the, the models around uh, single namespace and so forth. I think those are the concepts that are really important in order to make it easy for the users, the community, in order to deal with this uh, this this major trends that, that are in front of us. So I hope that sort of makes sense uh, uh, in terms of where I see the video ecosystem and, and what's, what's, what's really happening and what the trends that are likely over the next two to five years and some of the implications of, of those trends for, for us as all uh, video ecosystem players in the, in the industry. So, if that makes sense, if there uh, uh, any question, I'm happy to take it. But let me just uh, quickly summarize again five, just so that we have it in our head. Uh, number one uh, is anybody wants to watch the number one trend? Uh, nobody? Competition. <laughs> intense competition. Thank you. Thank you. Intense competition for user share of minute, right? Proliferation of large, uh, uh, professionally generated, generated content, right? Uh, large file, file formats, right? Fragmentation is number three. Large file formats is number four. And then, anybody want to close it out? Enterprise. Right, enterprise video growth. Very important to remember, I tell you, I, I, I'm, I'm telling you, I, I would urge you all to think about enterprise video. And you, you know, do a little bit smoothing yourself, a little bit discover yourself. You'll find. Companies have, and, and by the way, one challenge with enterprise groups is that there's not a single group that deals with video creation in, in a large corporation. You will find probably there are 10 groups, 15 groups that are doing it. So that is a challenge, right? You know, you don't have a single point to go to. That's the challenge. But if you uncover those and if you begin to mine that, I think there's a tremendous business opportunity uh, to consolidate that and, and, and make, you know, hopefully good, good money to you. Doing that, right? um, so that's the, those are the five trends and some of the implications that we talked about.